Minutes constructability. Um, so it starts by setting the, uh, the, the clash detection settings. Um, I can add, remove layers. Uh, so I have uh, selected all the layers in this model. And um, I can then select element types that I would like to compare. I'll select all element types. And that is my first set. Then there is a second set, so the right side, that I'm comparing against. And so also for this side, I'm selecting all the layers. And I will select all the element types as well. Then I'm saving this as a, a new uh, detection or clash detection setting. Clicking OK. And I'm opening that. And then I say activate and detect all the clashes in this model. And found uh, two clashes, and uh, those cannot be seen if I, if I just click between them, or it's very hard to see them. So auto zoom is one way to make that clearer, but that doesn't help me too much in this view. But what I want to use is auto reveal which peels away those elements that are preventing me from looking at the, uh, the, the clash. And that is dynamic. Uh, so when I spin the model, it only removes those elements, or it will update the elements that are temporarily hidden. Especially with a building that has a, uh, has a facade structure and you're looking at something that's inside the building, this is very helpful because it, it only peels away the facade and you don't miss the context of the rest of the building. Um, other view modes are um, dim model which makes everything else gray uh, which makes it easier to recognize what, which elements are, are yellow. Uh, I can of course isolate which only shows those elements that are clashing and translucent mode makes all the other elements translucent. Quite obvious. Uh, we have found that um, the, um, uh, the, uh, the other software is finding many more issues than, uh, than, constructability, uh, than constructability Manager in Vico Office. And that is because uh, that other software is finding the individual polygons. So if you have one element that clashes with another, it could lead to up to four or five or six clashes. Constructability Manager automatically groups those clashes. It's only one clash between two elements. So going through the, uh, the list of, uh, of issues that were detected is, is a lot faster because you only find it once. There's no duplicates. Once you identify uh, an issue, you right click and say mark as constructability issue. Uh, then it goes to this tab. <clears throat> and in here I can uh, add further information. So I can define severity, uh, description. Uh, let's add a description here. And I can, let's do that in here as well to make the report a little bit nicer. And what you really saw uh, was that um, when I selected it, the marquee here is, is presented. That is the, the boundary of the snapshot, of the viewpoint that I saved with this constructability issue. <clears throat> I can save several con uh, viewpoints with one uh, constructability issue. It is always the default one that is included in the report. So here I have another viewpoint assigned to CI4. Uh, so rotate it, building viewpoint. And all that information is collected and, uh, and ready to be included in the report as soon as I'm, I'm done with a uh, constructability review. In the, um, once I've saved a viewpoint, let's create a new one for here. Let's see, so like this, add a viewpoint. I got uh, markup tools available. So let's say I want to add a cloud. I can put that in here. And that is also included in the report. So everything you put in here, you don't have to go into Snagit. 
uh, you can add uh, add text to or uh, or change the color of the of the markup. Um, and this this boundary helps you to define the viewpoint in such a way that the image that's included in the report doesn't have to be resized, uh, and that typically results in the images in the report not looking too nice. After I've uh, collected all my constructability issues, uh, I'm ready to go into a meeting. Of course, there's um, issues that cannot be resolved during a meeting. If that is the case, I generate an RFI that becomes an official RFI. Uh, once I, or if I cannot get to resolution of an RFI without extra cost, without changing the contract, I uh, generate a change order and so that way the whole workflow from a design issue from a constructability issue all the way out to change order will be covered. I already mentioned that um, <clears throat> you can oh wait a minute something else to mention first. Uh, you can also add issues manually so not all issues that are detected <clears throat> are caused by a clash between two elements or by, by two pieces of geometry. Uh, maybe a, a condition that you recognize by exploring the 3D model also have, has to be tracked as a constructability issue. If that is the case, I just click Add Issue and I have inserted a, a manual uh, constructability issue. Uh, when I select that, I can still add elements and adding elements is done using uh, the, the painting mechanism. So I can go in and say, okay, this element belongs to that constructability issue. 